Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, it's me GamerTurk, your best source of sort online information on YouTube and let's have a recap of the Kadokawa Expo from March 7th. Now, first off, probably what you would be most excited about regarding Progressive Ariova Starless Night movie, we got absolutely nothing as I personally predicted back in SLVKS server, despite what we could have gotten, as I mentioned in my previous video, as to what we can expect from the event if they choose to show those. So it seems like we are now waiting for Anime Japan 2021 on March 27th to get all the news regarding Progressive Area of Silence Night movie. And now that I mentioned all the anime news, or lack thereof, probably there's gonna be a huge dive in viewership, so please do hit that like button before we leave. But now we are moving on to the SR Games section. Of course, as expected, the SR Games section actually did have quite a bunch of news, including a big surprise one that none of us saw coming. So let's just get on with them. First off, a new event for SAO Games has been announced, SAO Beaters Meeting, well, not exactly Beaters Meeting, let me check, SAO Game Fan Gratitude Stream, that's gonna be taking place on March 21st, Asuka and Reona, the opening singers of various SAO themes, will be there, so look forward to it, I guess, chances are we'll get a whole lot more SAO Games info over there, whether it's mobile games, whether it's arcade games, arcade games you don't hear in the West, but they do have a bunch of news regarding the Deep Explorer arcade game and Variant Showdown, of course, which I didn't think about in my previous video, but it may end up being an arcade game as well. We didn't hear anything regarding Variant Showdown at Kadokawa Expo, but if you're curious, do potentially look forward to the SAO Games event. It's more specifically SAO Games oriented. It's an event very much built to share SAO game news. So we may get some teasers or reveals over there, potentially, or not. None of this is a guarantee, it's just that's where you may expect some news. I'm clarifying this way too much because there's that one guy on Twitter who had quite the issue with stuff I have said regarding what you can potentially expect at Kadokawa Expo regarding anime news. Although I have clarified more than enough that None of these are guarantees and we'll likely get more invite to Anime Japan, but whatever, I digress. Other big news, I have a big list over there, that's why I keep peeking downwards. So we are actually starting with that surprise announcement that nobody was really expecting. Unitel Ring is coming to SAO Games, but specifically the mobile games, so they are just cash grabs. <laughs> Anyways, there was a huge trailer for this, I really love the trailer with the music and design they had, so you can check that out by clicking the icon on the top right corner. That's my left because the camera is mirrored, but it is going to be your right, hopefully, because otherwise I'm gonna look very stupid again. Anyways, what they are doing with Unite to Ring coming to SAO Mobile Games is just a promotional campaign for now. They're basically bringing characters that are featured in Unite to Ring 1's cover, Alice, Asuna and of course Kirito. So don't worry about getting spoiled, they have announced none of the United Ring original characters so far or any kind of story event crossovers or original United Ring based stories. So you can probably look forward to just having fun with those units. So far Alsatian Rising Steel got a very good Alice unit that is incredibly good for the current ranking, really banking on that cash grab opportunity right there. Memory Defrag is getting the, well, has gotten, I believe, the Unite to Ring Kirito, and Integral Factor is getting a skill for Alice and Asuna from Unite to Ring, which, as Integral Factor is designed, they kinda got the short end of the stick again because the skills are not particularly that noteworthy in regards to visuals, but hey, who am I to judge? At least you can have fun with the characters in the other games. Now, I feel like taking a small tangent there, but some people have been really rolling with the news that this may mean a United Ring anime announcement is coming soon. No, 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 no. Those of you who have played Memory Defrag since the beginning, or any SAO console games for that matter, probably do remember the initial Alicization campaigns with Alice and Yujiro coming over to the games with 50 different units over the course of time before anything regarding Alicization anime was announced. And mind you, Alice and Yujo were Elicization original characters back then, so that was effectively bringing in new characters with official voice actors into those games. And during the time this was made, Elicization anime was not even announced, we were still in the ordinal scale phase with a long time to come until Elicization was eventually announced. In this case, 
we're just getting the characters we know in United Ring outfits. We are not even seeing any United Ring original characters with new voice actors that would later go over to the anime to voice them. So don't expect any United Ring anime announcements in the near future. There is one thing they can do that may bring a potential United Ring anime earlier than any of us expect, because as far as we know, United Ring is nowhere near being completed, at least four to five more years until that story is completed. But there is one way they can bring in a United Ring anime earlier than the story is completed, which will be a completely separate video, because if I go over it over here, it's gonna be a 20 minute video over here, which I do not want. So look forward to that, make sure to subscribe, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video. Subscribe for the latest news! But yeah, moving over to the Elsation Liquorice news, which again, we have quite a lot of news over there as well. This was quite the plentiful stream for SEO game stuff. So first off, I should mention that we got about three or four different previews. You can find all of them by clicking the icon on the top right or they'll be in the description as well. Probably I can put more into the description, so do check the description. But yeah. The main piece of news that we got is a slight change to the roadmap that they planned for Elsation Liquorice. So going through my notes right here, Battle Coliseum, as you probably do know from our previous news drops, will be coming with the Selka DLC. And as you play this Battle Coliseum, you'll be getting some rewards that you will later be able to redeem at a shop. The problem was, and I, and I mentioned this was a big problem back at the time, they planned the reward shop to be coming with Elsation Liquorice Miosotis update. So the first paid DLC would be when this reward shop would be coming into the game and that was way too much, too big of a timeline to introduce a mode and then introduce its actual rewards which wouldn't work. This is now a better situation because they actually did pull the reward shop over to the Selka DLC which is probably gonna be coming a month and a half later than the Selka DLC. It's still not okay to introduce a mod without its rewards coming but hey it's actually sooner than it would otherwise be so that's a plus good job guys second change in that timeline is the amount of characters we are getting with that shilika dlc previously the roadmap showed one or two characters would be coming with that shilika dlc now that has been fixed over to two characters so we're definitely getting two characters not going down to one anymore and of course, the new weapon type as well. Now those two have been bundled into a separate update that's gonna be coming later than the actual Shilika update. So Shilika update is version 1.50. These two, the new weapon type, which is confirmed to be spears, I'm gonna talk about in a bit, and the two new characters that's gonna be introduced into the game. They are uh, previous, they are original characters from the previous SEO Gamers games. And no, we do not know which two, but given spears are being introduced in the same update as one of those two characters are, you can probably guess who's that gonna be, so we're, we're... It seems like one of those two is gonna be seven. But these are going to be introduced in version 1.51, sometime later than the Shilika update, it's not clarified when that update is going to be, how much later than the Shilika update, we don't even actually know when specifically the Shilika update is gonna come. So yeah, this is probably done to, you know, the two new characters that are coming, they're probably gonna have some character events involved and they really want to go with that, a more regular stream of story content. So, so they're gonna deliver that Shilika update with the new story and then they're gonna wait a bit, one, two, three weeks, however long they deem necessary and introduce this new update with Spears along with the two Gamers original characters to provide a bit more character based story content right there. Again, we, we absolutely do not know if the new characters are gonna come with some character events, but I would imagine they do because all of the characters in the game do have character affinity stories attached. That's been the case with all the previous SAO games so far. I do not expect anything different than that. And now moving on to the Selka DLC news. We got a small story preview that's taking place at the beginning of this DLC with Alice and Kirito and we translated that over on SAO Wiki. Again, you can find all of that by clicking the top right or the description. And after that, we got a whole lot more previews from the Selka DLC. The boss has been confirmed to be Ilfang the Cobalt Lord, the floor one boss from Aincrad that you will certainly recognize. As with the other DLC raid bosses, He's gonna be leveling up by one each time you defeat it as well in the raid mode and it's gonna stop at level 150 and that's when you'll be able to farm 
upgradable versions of the weapon it drops for Alice. Again, once you reach that maximum level, he is dropping upgradable weapons much like all the other bosses. Speaking of all the other bosses, Again, much like DLC 2, bumped up Reaper up to 125, same as the maximum for the Dullahan boss. With this Cobalt DLC, we'll definitely get all the previous bosses bumped up to a max of 150 as well for their farmable weapons. And again, if you haven't revisited any of the bosses, once you revisit them, you'll be getting much better rolls than previously possible as well. Now, of course, we got a preview video for Ilfang the new outfit for Selka, the weapon that Alice is getting, and of course, not just the weapon, but the new finisher it's coming with for Alice, so you can check that out, just, just like everything else right there. And last but not least, we got some previews for the new spear weapon type that's been confirmed in the stream. To go into a bit more specifics that were mentioned in the stream, again, Shimana's translated it over at SEO Wikia, and I'm gonna check my notes here. There's gonna be 8 sword skills for spears, very similar to every other weapon in this case. But the thing is, it's obviously not mentioned whether some of these are derivation skills, so something like vertical, put an input, vertical arc, put an input, vertical square. It's not mentioned how many of them are derivation skills like that. So do expect it to be something like, I don't know, five to six sword skills. That some of which have derivations into higher tier skills. And of course, some of these skills are going to be AoE attacks for more crowd control around as the weapon, you know, spears are a bit longer coming with that. It's also mid-range skills compared to short skills for the likes of swords and stuff or daggers. Some of the attacks, as mentioned, are gonna be AoE attacks, maybe, you know, spin your spear around or something, and some of those will be thrust attacks for single target enemies. So it's a bit more versatile than some other weapon types. <laughs> to be honest, this probably doesn't affect you if you're running the Berserker skill to turn all of your attacks into AoE attacks, which is what I've done, because fuck single target attacks. But hey, if you don't want to run Berserker with that and switch over to Spears for some AoE attacks, you can do that now. And some final small pieces of information regarding the possible release date of the Selka DLC. Futami has mentioned that the release is going to be in two to three weeks as the Selka DLC is now in that final debugging phase, as long as no issues are discovered with the build. Again, Last time they were really going for that February 11th date, but literally one or two days before the release stream they had, they found an issue with the build and pulled the update from being released, delayed it by one week. Again, something like this may happen, that's why they're stating there in the final debugging phase, and also that can be pushed forward if they find other pressing concerns with that build. So, you should expect it within the next two to three weeks unless something unexpected, unforeseen happens. But that's pretty much it from the Kadokawa Expo. We are now, of course, looking forward to the SAO Beaters meeting. Not Beaters meeting, I keep mixing that up. The game appreciation fan stream that they're gonna have on March 21st. And of course, for more Sword Art Online progressive Aria of a Starless Night movie news, we're gonna be looking forward to Anime Japan 2021 on March 27th. Thank you very much for watching, a huge thanks to all my patrons and channel members as usual, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, stay cool.